the third track that I'm going to um, delve into is by well, the Long Blondes, and it's a track called Century, and it was the opening track on the couple's album. It's probably the record, the song on the album, which has got the most amount of synthesizers on it. One, of, but it, across the whole record, there's probably about two or three tracks that actually had synths on there. Uh, but this was the one where it kind of went all out and pushed the boat out with regards to keyboards. Um, half of it was done at the Maloko Garden. The other half was actually done in this very room using a lot of my uh, gear and bits and bobs. Um, I'll get to that later. But the uh, it was probably a track that came back mainly in the studio. Um, the drums... Uh, and the rough arrangement were put down first, uh, bass line, drums, uh, there wasn't actually a vocal line at the time, uh, so we just kind of like built it up from there. This is the original, the original drum stems that went in. It's a very 4-4 screech, come on hugely as a drummer, I think the sound really good, steady pace. Got some bass. Where's the bass line? Oh, we also phased the drums loads. There's a lot of tape phasing on there to give it this kind of a bit more kind of excitement in the top end. And we did it naturally by you know just like using like tape phase on there, just ran it slightly out from what was going back in again and slightly modulated it at times as well. You know, the whole thing of like sticking your finger on it just to get it slightly in and out. So you got that. Baseline. Oh, also another thing we did was uh, add an extra kick. The CS10, a bit of extra kick and snare. That's the CS10, basically screech retriggering it from there. That's like a compilation of the kick and snare. like this. <laughs> Some claps over the top. Some extra percussion in there. player who can pretty much get it down in one or two takes. Sounds cool. I think we used her, I think we used the Selma on this actually, Selma head. And then obviously throughout the song we've got this thing here which people have said is actually guitar which isn't a guitar. Obviously, when you hear it like that, it's not a guitar. It's a very, very, very cheap Yamaha keyboard. It's one of those kind of Yamaha, those black or gray Yamaha things that are about that big with like green writing and about 99 presets on. And it's completely, it was completely out of tune. So we had to, we had to tune the track around the tuning of this keyboard. We might have actually like shifted it like 33 cents up or down or something. But that couple with uh, all your drums and stuff sounds like this.
there's this, um, there's this, uh, what I was kind of calling a synth swarm, which is actually my um, ARP sequencer triggering the SHO1. And uh, this is probably something that I don't think anyone would have ever expected to hear in a long blonde record, but I think it sounds pretty fucking decent. So. <laughs> This was another, this was actually the, I think this was the microcord going through a cheap transistor amp, making these really quite mad sounds, which I really love. Love this. <laughs> those two sound like Kate's voice coupled with that it's really just kind of like jumps out from nowhere um, right so those are kind of pretty much the foundations of it there's a few things that are quite interesting on here um, notably some of Emma's guitar playing and despite people kind of thinking that Emma doesn't actually play much she plays a hell of a lot in the studio and Emma gave us some of these kind of a uh, kind of quite glacial weird guitar parts just going through I think it was a space echo it's encouraging her just to kind of like hit strings and just make kind of pads out of stuff you know so just kind of all this kind of stuff in there there's loads near the end actually which she does to the track underneath it. complete Roxy Music style steel on, on the Juno again. Uh, uh, going over to the vocals and backing vocals. Really, really happy with the vocals on this actually. Backing vocals kind of end up layering them and just kind of creating this kind of idea was treating the backing vocals like, like Kraftwerk would kind of treat synths, kind of layering them and making chords out of them. Um. Catch me when I'm falling. Catch me when I'm falling. Century, century, century.
was what, what river was this? It was the one in the garden. It was the it was the rap version of um, of the Space Echo, like like kind of the digital version. Put these on this. It's really beautiful reverb. vocals as well. And those are actually deliberately over-processed to give it kind of quite a cold kind of feel, you know, like a mechanical sort of like, sort of like kind of Cold War style kind of vocal, you know. That's it, and that one.